here we are in Matt Adams studio. Guys, Matt, if you don't know him, is a fixture of the Golf Channel. Thank you so much for the invite. Right. And Matt, your first love is equipment. You know, you're a broadcaster now, but your first love is equipment and you're an equipment expert. We love to chat about what's new every year, especially uh, in January. You know, it's exciting to see what the companies have come up with. Now, we're at the PGA Show 2023, and back in the day, the PGA Show was the place, you know, demo day, where all these new equipment came out and was so exciting. Yeah. The world has tried to kind of change a little bit. Now, you know, it's a little bit different with releases, but there's still great excitement coming into 2023. Yeah. So, let's talk first of all about drivers, and okay. what is new in drivers for 2023. Got, I, I put out a few here for you, Doc, take a look at, I mean... Let's, first, let's go with Ping first of all. Let's, let's, let's build up, I think, to the one that everybody wants to talk about. But let's talk about <laughs> Ping first of all. Uh, this, is, this is Ping's new G430. And as you know, with the, and it's kind of a theme with all of the products that, that you'll see here or see at the show or what have you, is that they're all working on stabilization. And what's that? That is called moment of inertia. And what moment of inertia is essentially is stabilization of the head at the moment of impact. And because most amateurs tend to hit the ball in this region of the face, the more that you can stabilize the head and an off-center hit, if you're hitting it, as they, as they say, dead on the screws, you're going to get stable performance mm -hmm. almost with any driver to, regardless of make. But what they're trying to do with, with these drivers as they evolve is get more and more stability. The way they do that, of course, is they move, in many cases, move the weight down and back to try to impact the initial launch angle. And where you see these drivers, uh, if you guys can see that, this is, this is a weight that they can move. And so you can have, like this one right now has a draw bias to it, more weight that you have towards the heel of the, of the club looking at it from this direction, it's going to tend to, to close the face and you can draw it. Uh, the, more, the more you put the weight up here or up here, tour players in the old days used to put lead tape up here, it hangs the head open. So you, you ball, basically they want to eliminate the left. So this is just kind of an evolution of that. You can see the various weights. They do a really good job of, uh, of looking at it. Would you say that companies, uh, because draw bias drivers got, have become so popular mm -hmm. that they almost have reverted to having draw bias drivers as their default kind of driver? Well, the default is because the default for, for the vast majority of golfers is a slice. Uh, most people are coming over the top and the ball's going the right. So, so, so they're engineering a draw bias into the they're standard They're engineering drivers. a draw bias because it doesn't sell as many clubs that call it anti-slice, but it's the exact same yeah. thing. That's what, that's what they're attempting yeah. to do. And but just Ping, I, I always say Ping solved the equation about 10 years ago with their, with their Gs, and they're just always just, you know, they don't reinvent the wheel. It wouldn't be as big a splash as other companies but they're just they're so stable they're what's so different straight. about these is that if you look at when i pulled this this club out of the box the other day and and someone saw it he's, he's actually a european tour player and he thought that this was a cobra club yeah because we're so used to ping being kind of matte black and very yeah. you know almost looking like a weapon yet it has these touches of color in this one which which is kind of unlike ping as a tradition and so but it, but i think it brightens it up and makes it a really cool looking club and it's got these turbulators on top, as they call yeah. them, and this is all That's this good. is all about airflow, you know, in terms of, of how what resistance this head impacts or, or is subject to as it's flying through the air. I think it'll be a success. It, like I mean, as I say, you know, they don't change very much, but they don't have to because it's all they're super, yeah, super beautiful. Straight. Right. Let's move on. What would you like to see next? Let's talk about. I use the Cobra Rad Speed Driver. I, oh. I, I got to know Tom Olszewski. I, I, love, I love the guy. I mean, he's an absolute genius in Cobra. So let's talk about Aerojet. I mean, they love their colors. They love their tech. This thing is absolutely chock full of, of gizmos and gadgets. And So let's talk about it. So what, what do you see when you see Cobra? The, the first thing that strikes me about this, if I hold this, if I get the angle right in your camera here, Doc, yep. it reminds me of a Porsche. Right? The Cobra drivers have always, to me, looked like high performance sports cars. And I spoke to him about that. I wonder if this by accident or is, no, it, is this I, like I, absolutely. I, I flat out spoke to him about it and they said they do use the car industry as inspiration in terms of color, color combinations, and the aesthetics. So 
I love the way that Cobra makes a club look like something that you just pick it up and go, wow, that thing looks like it can perform. And what I really love, because I think it's beautiful among yeah. other things, is you can see the carbon. See yeah. it here? See the carbon weave? Let me show yeah. you guys no, we'll, this we'll, way. Don't worry, we'll be real all that and it'll be perfect. Yeah. But isn't it gorgeous yeah. right here? Yeah. So that's all the carbon weave. Now when you see carbon, wherever you see carbon, that's, that's lighter obviously than metal. So you're seeing weight that's being moved. And that's the stuff that you were just talking about. When you see these weights, and again, this is, this is one that I picked that has very much a square face to, to draw a bias on mm. it. And I, I did that deliberately to show you guys the different clubs that I thought would appeal to the vast majority that are, that are watching. But you can adjust these weights through all the custom fitting. Obviously, all of these clubs, you can adjust the, the shaft yeah. options here. And these options will not only impact loft, it's usually plus or minus about one and a half loft. So this one as a standard is at 10.5, so you can go down at least as low as a nine on this one, or you can go up as high as a 12 on it. However, you also can adjust on these drivers what face angle you want. Do you want it to be square? Do you want it to be slightly open? Do you want it to be slightly closed? And again, that all comes from the fitting process. The, the faces on these are all computer milled mm. and they're all AI designed. So AI being art artificial intelligence. And what they do is in the old days when we would have a head, I remember a story about you know, Darren Clark was, was back in the day was, was hitting a driver and he was like, ah, it's a little bit too toe close. Well, they got to go back and retool. So when they would do testing, they may have five different heads. And yeah. it's like, do the best you can, get as close as you can. Well, because of what they can do now with AI, they'll do, and it's all computer models, they'll do tens of thousands of tests, literally tens of thousands. So in the old days, you couldn't build tens of thousands of heads. So they'll find the optimum place to put weight behind this to get the optimum performance. Yeah. It's, it's really quite remarkable. If, 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 Co if, 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 Cobra were to, if Cobra were a premiership soccer team, mm -hmm. would they be up there with City, Liverpool, or would they be mid-table? Like, uh, they're for, not mid table. For me, no. for me, they, they'd make the Champions League. They'd be they'd be a top four. Top four. Yeah. Okay. Because for me, I mean, they're they're so they, they're real innovators. I know Taylor made all the time push things, and I always think they're the real innovators. I think that Cobra are very close as well. I, I mean, mean, if you look at the top companies in no particular order: Callaway, Taylor Made, Titleist, Ping, Cobra. Uh, I'd even throw Wilson in there with their technology. Mm. At one, depending on what product you're talking about, one of the, they they they'd emerge. They come up. It'd be like fish coming up for air. So it's it's hard to take a whole company. I mean, it probably Callaway and TaylorMade, you could put at one and two. And sometimes one is one. Sometimes the other one is one. They, they, those those would vary. Callaway TaylorMade. Uh, okay. I would, I would say Callaway TaylorMade. Uh, in terms of premium players, of which it's a very small percentage in the marketplace, uh, they tend to prefer, for example, uh, Titleist for obvious reasons too, in terms, of what, in terms of what they build. So when we talk about the top companies, it depends on what product categories mm. we're talking about and where they pop up. Yeah. But the list that I just gave you, those are pretty much the ones, and it's just a question of where they settle at any particular time and any well, particular I think product. they're great. I think they punch above their weight. I mean, they don't they don't pay tour players. They're like, I mean, they, they select certain tour players. Well, they got players. some good ones now. They, they got Gary Woodland on their staff, and yeah. Yeah, they've, uh, they've, like, yeah, they've done it brilliantly over the years. Yeah. You know, and we thought years ago, oh, they're, they're, they're picking guys that are way out there. You know, but now they're just, it just worked out brilliantly. So that's Cobra, top quality, let's move on. Okay. Srixon, okay, yeah, Srixon have really, really come through in the last few years. And of course, Shane Lowry uses Srixon drivers. So now these guys would be, like traditionally, Srixon drivers wouldn't, definitely wouldn't be as popular as TaylorMade, Callaway, Ping, Titleist, but now, they're pretty much they're, they're well, climbing again, up the table. It comes down to, one, you're talking about marketplace and, and marketing and where your primary markets are around the world. And Where the is other, their primary market? Japan. 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 So uh, the other side of it, now you're talking about performance and technology. Yeah. So this Shrixon, is the ZX5, by the way, guys. Yeah, Strixon has always had the performance and technology. They just haven't had the strong marketing, yeah. at least stateside. Now they're trying to build more uh, into that in, in more stateside. I mean, last year, for example, 
their irons, even before Brooks Kepka signed on as an ambassador company, he was playing their irons. Think yeah. about that for a second. A player that could play whatever he wants is playing one of their yeah. irons. He's now, of course, an ambassador. And that's not unusual for Shrixon because their product is so good. This is their new driver. They have a couple of different models. And again, in keeping the stuff that we're talking about, when you see the weight right here, when you see weight on the front, when you're looking at the sole of a club and you see the weight here, that's going to bring down the flight of the ball. So mm. the vast majority of golfers need to bring up the flight of the ball, the initial launch angle. So when you're looking at a club that's set up like this, you are you to my eye when I look at it, like okay, this is a better player's yeah. club before before we even know anything about it. That weight can obviously be adjusted. We talk about the adjustability that we have here. Again, this looks to me like it is made for speed. Mm -hmm. It's it's a machine. And all the technologies that we've been talking about, of course, are inherent in these types of clubs. This is a really, really solid driver from Shrixon. And I mean, even when you look at, I don't know if you can see that, but when you look closely at the shaft, you can see that the, it's getting to a point where you can micromanage your setup. And so anyways, this is, this is just one more product for them. I think I may, I have a couple of their irons over there too. They're, the product that they design not only has really exceptional uh, technology within it, but I think overall Shrixon could have the best looking product from stem to stern. Really? Yeah. Okay, that's quite an endorsement and that's, that is really appreciated. Wait, very close to the face, better player. It's going to bring it down. The holy grail is this knuckleball, low spinning, Ronaldo free kick. That's yeah, <laughs> yeah it's interesting because well, the, the idea, not to get too technical, but the idea with, with the way they want the modern drivers to work is that when you have the interaction between this head and a golf ball, it's a very violent interaction. So the golf ball is going to compress. This head, the top of this head is also going to wobble. Uh, the face is going to compress and, and uh, like a spring-like effect mm -hmm. come back out again. All of that is done in milliseconds, but it's a very violent inter interaction. So when the ball compresses, the ball physics is going to rock it back to its original form. That causes velocity. So what they don't want with these clubs is they don't want that ball spinning. Mm -hmm. So they design it in such a way that you have a casing layer that's very hard. Generally, the interior of a golf ball, and it varies depending upon what your ability level is, the best players want a golf ball that's hard So because they have the speed and the strength uh, to, to compress it. When it compresses, it's going to come back with more energy. Mm -hmm. And, but again, what they don't want is the spin. Where the spin comes from in the modern golf ball is that when you have that very hard core, so now you've got a high lofted club, say, when you have a high lofted club, it's harder to compress the ball. Yeah. Because look at the angle. The first thing the ball is going to do is come up that face. So when you have a high lofted club, you, you need spin. Where do you get the spin from if you, if you can't compress the ball very much with these clubs? Now, you're going to get some compression, don't get me wrong. So what they do is they put a really high casing layer just under a urethane cover. And what that is, is it's, it's, or why that's there, is to push the urethane into the groove. So the grooves act like teeth and it causes spin on the golf ball that you won't get coming off the, the mill a fraction of a second that it's on this face because it's so much flatter. But it is important for people to, to not, you know, if you're just, you play at the weekends or you're a club golfer or you're a, you're a you know, 10, 15 handicapper, that is not, that's not necessarily a good thing to just to seek this distance via less spin on the golf ball because... Well, you won't get it. Like, for example, this, this club is made for such a good yeah. player that yeah. if the average player tried to hit it, they'd have trouble getting this thing Absolutely. airborne so, to a point yeah. where it would, it would carry. So it's very important to get the right driver for your game. So just get fit. So you, yeah. Yeah, just make, if you're going to invest the money, make sure that it's fit for your swing. But if, and if you do see a weight very close to the face like this, it's probably a low spinning. Probably. If, if it's dual weight... <laughs> Not to get confident. Yeah, yeah. Well, but if it's dual weight, you can put a real low weight up front. And a heavy one at the back. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So a quick tip there. Okay. Brilliant. Okay, Matt. I think this is the one everybody wants to know about. <laughs> Stealth 2 from TaylorMade. Now, Stealth 1 last year, how did you feel it went? Oh, it went very as, well. As a whole. Yeah. I mean, when, you, when you've got the... the TaylorMade has an incredible stable, right? When you've got... 
Rory, you got Colin, you got Tiger, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. So to have that team to be able to introduce a new product into the marketplace is incredibly powerful yeah. uh, as a tool. And what happened was when, when Stealth came out last year, I should have grabbed one of the last year's models. See, I'm so excited showing you guys. No, no. I, know I'm, I, I know I keep leaving your frame, but I want to show you the product. When they came out with this carbon on the face last year, it was a revolutionary move. And what, what all the club companies are looking to do is to do something that would grab your attention mm -hmm. and go, wow, that's different. How is that going to work? Now, I can tell you, face inserts of whatever variety are not new in the industry. If you went back, we could go back 100 years, 150 years, and everything new that you see in golf you will have seen in the past. The materials vary. For example, like face inserts and irons, at they, they, times they tried like a leather patch. They've tried everything. Really? You know, um, different types of shafts made from different materials. They've tried everything. So what we're doing is we're recycling constantly concepts that have already been tried, but being tried now with new technologies, whether we're talking about AI technologies or material technologies in Union. So what's changed about Stealth 2 is that they've learned that what they can do with this carbon face, just like they could do with metal, they're starting to be able to do with carbon. Now, carbon is a woven material. It's layered. And so what they've done with this one for 2023 is that, again, bear in mind what we were saying earlier when I mentioned to you, if you hit it right in the center, as they say, the screws from back in the day, if you mm -hmm. hit it right on the screws, you're going to get performance regardless. But what they've done is they've thinned out the rest of this face. And through thinning out the rest of this face, it's making this face more dynamically reactive. Uh, so you're going to get better performance. Uh, they also have a technology that, that again, it's, it, it existed previously. It just wasn't perfected previously called Twist Face. And if you remember back in the day where you would get bulge and roll, and again, mentioning to you that most amateurs hit it high on the toe, uh, if you hit it really out on the toe out here, back in the day, you would get kind of almost a hook effect. And if you hit it low on the heel, which is another common place where people tend to hit the ball too, uh, you would get kind of a slice, right? That Ben Hogan used to want to hit the ball on all his clubs over here. Really? But, yeah, that was part of the Ben Hogan secret. Actually. I hit it just there naturally. And same, I'm, not, I'm no Ben Hogan. You're very, very Ben Hogan-like. Uh, so, and you'll get, you get the ball to, to fade more. Okay. Uh, so what they do with the twist face is they balance those sides so that if you hit it high on the toe or if you hit it low on the heel, it's going to tend to straighten the ball out more so you can get better performance on it. Everything else about this club, principally starting, is about movement of weight, just in that common theme. And, and that's going to be a common theme going forward for all clubs because what they're really looking for with this club is how can you already know it's going to give you performance in terms of distance what they're trying to get is forgiveness so that they can they can make amends for what we all do would you Sorry. say that uh, if you bought a stealth last year that you would be trading it in to get a stealth too uh, i don't i wouldn't say that i mean personally um I, I ask you that because when we, like the last, the last demo day we were at, we were talking to Brian Baz from TaylorMade and he, you know, we say, you know, like how much better is it from last year? And he always says, well, you don't go into an Apple store if you have an iPhone 12 to buy an iPhone 13, you know, I think the camera might be a little megapixel more or whatever. Yeah. But if you haven't changed your driver for seven or eight years, yeah. you are going to see a massive Massive improvement compared to yeah. I mean, if it's if it's seven or eight years and you get yourself because seven eight years ago there weren't as many people getting fit. You get fit, you have the right shaft because the shaft is really the wheels on the on on the on the race car. If, if if this is the engine, if you get that combo, I could see people picking up anywhere from ten to twenty yards, sometimes yeah. more. Yeah. Uh, if you if you went out every six months to a year and got yourself a new driver. You might pick up a yard or two. Yeah. In terms and of how, performance. And how many of us strike the ball as amateurs so consistently that we'd notice a yard or two? Yeah, I don't, I, I wouldn't, I, so I agree with him. That's why I didn't say that I think it's going to change your, your life just by switching no. to the latest version. Uh, but then again, there are those that want that because of the technology, and this will be more forgiving. W would you say that, no, just, just, just bear with me here. Let's imagine now that everybody in TaylorMade sitting around the conference table and they're going, oh, we're going to bring out a carbon driver. Uh, we're going to, you know, everybody's going to be worried uh, that this thing is going to break. 
this thing is going to be, because it's carbon, there's a worry that this thing's going to get smashed up or the face is going to break. So the first one we make, will, will we just kind of reinforce, make the face a little bit thicker, you know, just to be doubly, doubly, doubly sure that nobody's going to break it? And they went, yeah, I think that's a better idea. And then Stealth 2, they went, okay, now we have a year's full of feedback. This yeah. thing is bomb-proof. The face, of course, it's not going to break. And the engineers go, I told you so, it's carbon. So why don't we thin out the face now and just bring it, you can bring it back a little bit more and add a little bit more oomph to the, to no, the non-sweet spot. That's the way I think the conversation went in the room. Because everyone's fear, first of all, was, oh, it's carbon, it's going to, you know, people are going to worry it's going to break. But it, it was never going to break. I mean, carbon is just used in everything. It's so, so strong. But do you think that kind of might have been the way I the think conversation it's, I think went? it's possible. I mean, another secret of the, of the equipment industry is that these clubs are not necessarily a reaction to what's in the marketplace. The new one's not a reaction necessarily to what's in the marketplace right now. Uh, the, the club designs for 2024 are already being oh, worked yeah. on. Yeah, oh, when, we, when we went, when I called it TaylorMade, he said it's like a game of snooker. You know the way, like a good snooker player, they'll take five shots ahead? Yeah. We have five drivers ahead planned right. at all times. So there, there could be some reaction to what's happening in the marketplace because you get, you know, you're tens of thousands of, of test study or more. Yeah. Uh, but generally, that where they're going in the evolution is, is already kind of set on, on the plane. Uh, but anyway, just with the rest of this technology, this is their inertia generator that you guys have seen. You can see that big chunk of weight back here. That, again, is going to help the initial launch angle on this one. So this is a great driver for, for everybody in that regard. Uh, this is a speed slot here, and that's designed to get that face more reactive. So... Uh, I can't even go through all the technology, yeah. but I wouldn't have time, but there's a lot in it. But being that the, the, being that the limits are the limits, and they have been so for a long time, you know, coefficient of restitution or you know, all, these, all these limits, CT, maximums, you know, are you at a disadvantage? Do, are people, are they at a disadvantage when having, by not having a carbon driver, just having a titanium driver? No. Is, that, is that what TaylorMade kind of wants you to think, well, I mean, you know, that, you're, the, yes. that you're better off with carbon now because this is the future? Well, they do want you to believe that, yes. But the limits are still the limits. I mean, and they have well, to abide by the limits. Not necessarily from, from that sense. The, the coefficient restitution is 0.82, so you have a limit that your, your, outbound, your outbound energy is only going to be a maximum of 82% of the inbound energy coming in. That is by, by the limits of, of uh, the USGA and the RNA, correct. However, what they're working on with these drivers is what do you do if you hit it up here where the vast majority yeah. do or here where the vast majority do? If you're, if you're on an off-center strike, what can you do to bring up the performance in these areas in union with the, with the max performance that's already mm -hmm. set, the governor that exists in the middle of this club? If you can increase, I, I, don't, know, I don't know who it is. I've seen the best in the world, and there's a dispersion in terms of where they, they hit the golf ball yeah. and their smash factor. If you can improve those categories, and again, carbon is working for TaylorMade. It's an, it's an amazing material that they're using, but that performance can also be found in the other materials, titanium, yeah, totally. et cetera. Totally. So yeah, outside of the marketing of saying everyone should be playing one material or another, the reality is all the materials they're using in all the manufacturers are so highly tested mm -hmm. that they're getting high performance yeah. from all of them. But still, TaylorMade certain do an amazing job of marketing. It's and beautiful, yeah, yeah. It looks good, it is the part that push the boundaries. Yeah, no Matt, doubt. that is our chat on drivers. Really appreciate your insight and feedback on My that. Pleasure. Uh, it has been amazing. And next, we're going to have a look at some of the irons for 2023. But for now, for drivers, thank you very much. Cheers. All right, let's move on to just some game, super, super game improvement. Okay, these, when you go looking on Golf Pitter or wherever for golf clubs, and you're a weekend player, uh, you play a couple of times a year, you just want to enjoy the game as much as possible. Yeah. And, and, and go out and try to have a, equipment that hits the ball high and straight, and you can just have fun with your round, with mm -hmm. the club giving as much help as possible. That's where we are with yep. this kind of club. So, this is a new TaylorMade Stealth HD. Yes. Okay, make sure you look out for HD. But what have we got going on here that will help the occasional player? This... This club is built with more features to help a high handicap golfer than any I've seen in a long time. So this would be good if, say, 
Uh, you're not hitting the ball like you used to. You have trouble getting it into the air. Maybe you've lost club head speed. Maybe you're new to the game. Uh, this, this would be very good for people who just can't generate a lot of power. Again, it could be a senior golfer. Yeah, uh, actually, just, I, I forgot that. A senior golfer, definitely. Yes, exactly. Um, so the, the features and the reason why is, the, the, the reason why it's easier to hit a fairway metal or a driver for distance than it is an iron is because the width of the, uh, the, the flange, the sole of the club is wide. It's a launching pad. There's a lot of other factors too. But I just want to note that because if you look at the bottom of the sole, I'm trying not to I hit you with the club here, Doc. So look at the width of this sole, all right? Now, I'm gonna show you just for an example. This is, this is a tour caliber iron. This is, this is a forge. Look at the difference, okay? That much versus that much. This is a launching pad. Now, technically, when you have the design, when we were talking about drivers before, I was telling you that when you have the weight low and back, that has an impact on what's called the initial launch angle. It makes it go up. So this, where this weight is, and that weight is called center of gravity. It's actually a pinpoint, but it can be moved based on where you put it. Whenever you have the majority of the weight of an iron below the equator of the golf ball, that means almost however you come into that golf ball, whether it's over the top, whatever your move is, you're going to be coming at it with an ascending blow because of where the weight has been designed. So look at this club. Again, this is a Stealth HD. It's got a massive amount of weight below the equator of the golf ball. It's got that huge sole on it, which is going to help you get the ball airborne. They did use some carbon in here, which again, when you see carbon in use, that means that they're spreading weight out in different parts of the club. Uh, it's a little bit of a shallower design, again, more like a metal wood. So what's happening with a club like this is it's really more or less a hybrid between an iron yeah. and a metal wood, if you, if you please a hybrid. And then if you can see this piece right here, that's the offset. And the reason why they, put, they build offset into irons like this is so that as you're making impact, if again, if, you're, if, you're, if your face tends to be open and it doesn't close through the natural impact, which most people are coming over the top wouldn't, uh, then this little bit offset helps close the face up, helps square the face up as it comes into impact. So uh, there's more technology in this one that I haven't been able to get into in terms of what's inside, but this one is packed with all kinds of technology. You can see it. Yeah. Super reassuring. Put this down behind the ball. I mean, you're going to feel confidence. You're going to get the ball in the air. And you're going to get the ball in the air. So let's... Uh, still in the game improvement category? Yeah. Not as much, but um, this is just... This is the... This, this dealt without the HD. So the, like comparing the two, let's just... You grab that one. Yeah. So I mean, comparing the two, right? You can see it that way. You can see it this way. And again, when you look at these two, all right, what's different? Uh, you can see that th this, one, this one has a much more narrower profile. Right, this one, I'll, I'll switch away to you. This is the new Stealth Iron. I'll give you a nice little profile shot of it so you can see. It's a beautiful iron. Uh, and you can actually see the way that it's been engineered. I love when they do this. You can actually see where the metal has been removed so that it can be used in other parts mm. of the club. Now, where those parts are, one, it's the sole. This is called the flange of the club. And it, again, is a nice wide flange. Uh, the reason why is to help get the ball airborne to make sure that every time you make contact that the ball is getting up in the air. When you, when you see a move like this here, that's, that's so, one of those through slots so that you can get speed coming yep. off the face, a lot of technology that's built into that. Uh, you, again, let me just show it to you this way. Uh, picture a golf ball here, picture the amount of weight that you can see below the equator of the golf ball. It's gonna help get that golf ball airborne. So this one is, uh, compared to the one we just showed you, uh, this one is made for a little bit better player. This yeah. I would put I would put the handicap range in this one anywhere from probably a ten up to about a twenty handicap range, and that that would be the I, I think the meat and potatoes of it. Still has that nice little offset you can see there. Nice looking top line on the business end of the club when you're looking down yeah. at it. So really solid iron. Yeah, and the, I, I think they just do a lovely job of make, of packing technology into an mm -hmm. iron that looks that it should be. For a re, for yeah, a really and, and again, there's more technology in these irons than I'm able to go through yeah. today. And a lot, a lot of times that's on the interior of the iron and what they use to propel the ball forward Absolutely. as that face deflects. But re totally reassured that this is a game improvement iron, even though it isn't as chunky looking as the HD. And the Cobra Aerojet then, again, I, I, Cobra do a fantastic job with irons. They're one length iron a couple of years ago. Oh my God. 
Yeah, they that's still just, make them. Yep, yeah, still available. That actually accounted for huge amount of their, was it 80% of their iron sales at one stage? Everybody was going to one length or trying one length, but they are super innovators. So this is the Aerojet. So compared to the Stealth, it's kind of in a similar, would you say in a similar yeah. category, uh, 10 to 20 kind of lots of uh, help there from yeah, the iron. Yeah, th this, one, this one would have a handicap range at the high end that would even extend a little bit uh, deeper. So Again, looking through the different features that they have here, and, and I love the way the engineers do this. First of all, look at the width of the flange. Can you see it from point to point, right? But what they did here was they beveled it. And the reason why they beveled it on that side, in my view, looking at it as an old club guy, are, are two reasons. One is it takes away the effect of looking at the sole and saying, wow, that sole is really wide. But you're still getting the benefit of the width, the way they beveled the back side. I believe the other reason that they beveled the backside is so you don't feel it when you're making impact. It's not flared out there high enough that you're going to feel it. it you can see the way it kind of just bevels away on that side. Beautifully done. And then they actually brought it in. See, this is what they call a satin finish on this, and that's called a high polish. It's the same piece of metal, but because of the way that it's finished, and that's a, it's a hard process to do, the way that it's finished, it looks like different pieces. Right. Now, this piece in the cavity, that is a different piece, right? That's an insert that they put in there. And the reason why they put inserts in, one, in keeping with, with Cobra, that Cobra always makes things look awesome, mm. right? They just yeah. they work really hard on the aesthetics. But these are here for, for a reason. And what's behind these is usually some type of a TPU. It's, it's there to absorb vibration because uh, and it also adds to the feel of, of uh, and the sound of the club because they found that with golf clubs, whether you're talking about a driver, whether you're talking about an iron, that the sound will relate to how a golfer thinks the club feels. The reality is, is that this will also dampen vibration. So the combination of all those things go into the feel aspect of it. And once more, when you look at these irons and how big these irons are, if you pick up the hood, then you're going to see generally AI designed milled faces that expand what they call the sweet spot, the sweet zone, the hitting zone, whatever way that you like to refer to it. And that relates to the fact that people tend to not hit the ball in the center of the club face with any degree of regularity. It's all over the club face. So you want to maximize performance therein. Also internally on many of these new irons today, it's there internally, it, it could be uh, a, a material that will help launch the ball in union with the deflection of the face, right? Because these faces are getting thinner and thinner. Uh, so there's there's a lot of technology that goes on underneath all this, but that's a real beauty. It's, it's such a busy kind of marketplace, isn't it? This, yeah. For, you know, so the fact that they do go to all this trouble, to these little nuances, these these lines, these, you know, all this work shows that, you know, they really, really value and put in a massive effort to try and... No doubt. And, 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 but I love Cobra. They're just... Me too. They put, you know, that's why, I, that's why I buy this iron, because you just know they're not just churning them out there. You know, they think about this thing. And well, try. It's a busy market. Ricky was using, essentially, it's not this particular model. It was a, it was a predecessor. But he was using a four iron in this type of model yeah. as his driving iron. Yeah. I used to always see that on the European tour. The guys would, they, they would always have, but you, you know, so surprising, they'd have absolute knives in there, you know, and you'd go, oh my God, they were scary looking blades. And they'd all have a, 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 um, what we would call like a, a game improver, a super game improver, three or four iron in yep. there. And oftentimes, you know, I'd say, oh, can I do a Watson the bag? Say, oh yeah, no problem. And they'd reach for the three or four and take it out, throw it away, don't show that, don't show that. <laughs> but you know, they use it because the technology works. Yeah. So game improvement, Cobra, love them, big effort, big big up to the guys. Okay, Matt, let's uh, let's finish off with um, the good guys. Equipment for the really, oh. really, really good guys. Um, yeah, I got a couple things I can show you. This, I mean, this, this is a new muscle back from Cobra. And uh, all of this is, is forged, you know, so this is, this is, think about how they used to make a sword, right? Or a horseshoe, and you'd see it being hammered into place. Uh, these are huge machines that press it into place. Yeah. But they're absolute, I think, a forged club, and, and you can see the different ways that they did it. These are absolute works of art. Uh, no, we, that, 
on that phrase, works of art, you know, we're talking not so much about you know, massive jumps in technology here as opposed to just you know, making sure everything is quality, forged. Well, I mean, where, the, where the technology comes in though, Doc, is that is they, they, they can now embed tungsten in different parts of these clubs. So they have a real impact in terms of where they're moving that CG, that center of gravity for performance. So if you took a blade from 2023 and compared it to a blade from say 1985 or 1975, okay. you might look at it and go, you know what? That's the same club. It doesn't look all that different, yeah. but there is different technology inherent. I showed you this one to you earlier. This is a Shrixon's Forge Player's Blade. And again, you can look at it and go, Player's Soul, uh, the top line is, is a mere hint. I mean, it's just absolutely beautiful clubs. Then you've got some more that are kind of combination clubs. I'm going off camera to grab some different products for you guys. Uh, this is Cobra's King Tour. Really beautiful, really beautiful. And again, you can see all the different layers, and that's all done for specific strategic weighting. Uh, this is Shrixon's ZX7. All right? And this, this could be anybody from, say, you know, a scratch player. I would say all the way up to eight, maybe a ten with that kind of technology perimeter weighted. So there's, depending on what level player you are, there's a product in the marketplace. The only caution I would give to people is choose a club because it's beautiful. Choose a club because you're passionate about it, whether it's the brand or the model that, that, that uh, you saw, but don't choose a club because of ego. Uh, don't, don't choose say a, a, a muscle back because you have it in your head that you want to play a muscle back. Make sure that it's the right club for you. Meaning that if you're gonna spend the money, make sure you have somebody look at it with you to make sure that you're fit for it. If a muscle back is the club for you, you've got that game, more power to you and have fun with it because they're gorgeous. Uh, but if you need some more help and, and perimeter weighting, you know, a cavity back design is better suited for you, then do the one that's going to allow you to shoot the lowest scores because ultimately that's what's going to impress people the totally. most. I think that's a very important point. We all have aspirations. We all think, you know, we all talk in the, in the pub about hitting our drives such as at the distance, but in actual fact, we, we don't, okay? So choose the club that is right for you. Great point. Super, okay. Now, is, it, is, every, is a wedge, is a wedge, a wedge, a wedge, a wedge? Does every company make the same wedge? No, no, no. Because... You know, to, to, if you're not into equipment and you look at wedges and you look, say, you look at them on the golf bidder site, they all kind of look the same. You know, there's, there's a, you think there's not much leeway to make them different, but there is a massive, as we've found out over the years, talking yeah. to, you know, the top guys, the Volky guys, and uh, talking to Roger Cleveland. Oh, my God, there is a huge difference. Oh, yeah, it's and massive. And there's a massive amount of technology in wedges that you just don't see. Yeah, So yeah. what's your read on the Cleveland? Well, I mean, when you talk about wedges, they could be, remember we were talking about forged irons versus, say, a cast iron. Uh, they can be milled. There's all types of technology that goes into them. With, with Cleveland and their RTX model, essentially what they have done with that, and again, the center of gravity is so important to a club because that's where you're going to get the optimal performance. And they've been able to move the center of gravity of this club right around here. So they've been able to move it up a little bit so that where most people make contact with the, the ball and the club face, you're gonna get optimal performance. The other thing which they've done, which I'm not sure if you can see it, depending on how I hold it in, yeah. the, in the studio lights here, see the milling? Yeah, beautiful. That's all milling out there. And the reason why that's there is so if you catch the ball on that part of the face, you're still gonna get performance. The, the grooves, as I mentioned earlier, are the teeth of a golf club. Well, these grooves are really sharp, first of all, and, and I think I may have mentioned to you uh, one time or another, Doc, most wedges for an average golfer should be replaced in a two to three year cycle to get maximum performance here. But what I really wanted to note is that the grooves that they have within the grooves. So there's grooving, the big grooves are basically almost like uh, gutters on your house. So that as you make impact, if there's grass and debris between the ball and, and the grooves, they've got a little place for that to disperse. It still will bite, as I'm saying, but when you have grooves inside of grooves, you're really gonna get a lot of bite there. So that's just one example of areas where the, the wedges, it's you know, not, not a one size fits all for wedges. And when you look at the sole of a wedge, the most important part to me when I look at a sole is what have they done with the heel, right? How have, how have they taken that heel and just blended it in so it's not a sharp, for me personally, it's not a sharp heel because if you have a heel strike, it shuts the face down and you're gonna go low and left. But when it's blended like that, it gives you options 
that you can open the face in different ways. Think think about Seve in terms of what he could do with the club. Well, it was I, I guarantee you, if you check out the old timers that used to work in their own clubs, they all used to grind it over here. Then they take the weight and put it back with some lead tape or somewhere somewhere else. Usually right around here. Uh, so th this is just a beautiful design. You can see the beveling on the back side, and again, that's so that you have some flexibility and that you're not hitting that high point but it still gives you the effective bounce. This one is a 10 degrees bounce in this one, which is pretty much middle of the road when it comes to bounce, maybe a tiny bit low. But it's, yeah, so there's, there's great variety in wedges and it's well worth your time to just do a little research into the wedge that you think is, is right for you. I'll give you an example. Um, if I'm playing back home in, in at La Hinch, I want to have, for me, I want to have as little bounce as possible. Lynx is, Le Lynch is Lynx, for anybody who doesn't know Lynch, world, world famous Lynx, yeah. Right, but I want to have as little a bounce as possible because I want to be able to pinch the golf ball yeah. with the leading edge. If you're playing golf uh, in Florida where it can be very lush and can be soft and be wet, you want to have as much bounce as possible to help project the ball forward. If you struggle with bunker shots, you want more bounce. Right? So think of it as a wedge coming through the sand. So the more bounce you have, the easier it's going to be to get the ball airborne. So wedges are, are a category that I think actually don't get as much of attention as they deserve uh, because there is a lot of technology and the technology is very particular to the golfer. And also, you're dead right, and also because irons, lofts have changed like dramatically. Yeah. Over the years, they've come down. They've come, brought down the loft to make you feel like you're hitting your eight iron, uh, you know. 20 yards further, we're actually, in the, actually find your eight iron used to be a six iron back yeah. in the day. Yeah. So that's been wedges have become extremely important in bridging the gap at the short end of the golf club. No doubt. Matt, I think we've covered pretty much everything on the table here. Uh, fantastic insight. I love the gutters on the house reference. I'll have to remember that for the wedges. Thank you so much for your time. Always a pleasure, uh, Thank you. I really appreciate it. And um, hopefully we'll do the same. In 2024, if we're all here, please God, next year. Um, but it's been an amazing insight. Thank you so much. Pleasure. No, are you happy? I'm happy. I'm happy. Have I overstayed? My... No, no. You got six minutes, and I'm going on the air. Oh, six minutes. Oh right. my God. Oh, well, I get some B-reel. Mm -hmm. I'll let. You...